So before we begin the quiz, I've got some problems that people were having trouble with. Just look through all your guys' progress and pick some problems that uh, you're struggling with. Um, also, as we start to go, you know, do homework and, and participate in a different way you know, online through Khan Academy, um, I'm looking through, uh, and quite a few of you are doing great, like doing everything I'm asking you to do, but then there are other, just others of you who are not, like haven't even attempted to do the things that I've asked you to do, okay? So just make sure you're taking the time. All I'm asking you to do on the homework is to, to attempt some practice problems, right? And, and do a mastery challenge when you're done. I'm not asking you to achieve a certain level at this point. I'm just asking you to practice the, the things and get like a certain number in a row correct, maybe. Right. So, the very Happy least, Wednesday. Today right? is November 19th. Today is an A day. Happy birthday to Destiny Greer and Brett Volkman. Today's lunch is cheese pizza. Or okay, so as we look at this problem here, how would we solve for x y? Multiply the bottom by. Do this just to show that we're replacing this equation with a new equation, but they're equivalent. Right? Because both sides are, are three times bigger, but that still requires the same x and y to solve it. So we get 3x plus 12y equals 129. 129. Now what? Uh, cancel the threes. Now what? The, the threes will cancel, but what are we actually doing? added the two equations, why do we, why can we do that? We can just add equations together? So we can get a total x, y, and total number solved. Okay, well I, I do it. Why can't I do it? Not why do I want to do that? Why am I allowed to do that? That's why if I were to add them, I would get 0x and 9y, uh, but why can you add one equation to another? Because in these two, their x's and y's are the same. Like in one and two, their x's will be the same value, and in one and two, their y's will be the same value. Okay, that's part of it. Am I allowed to just take this stuff and add it to that stuff, and this and add it to that? Yeah? Not sure why? When we're solving an equation, what are we allowed to do? Like, what's the cardinal rule of algebra? Whatever you do on one side is equal, and you have to do it to the other. Say that. That is it. Is that what we're doing? We're doing the same thing. So think about we're taking this equation and we're adding this to it, this side of the equation. And then on the other side, we're adding this to it. Are you yeah. doing the same thing to both sides? Yeah. How so? Because once you combine 129 and negative 39, that becomes the same solution to each of the equations. So you can, they can both equal the exact same thing. Close. Kind of a hard question. When I add this stuff to this side and this stuff to this side, am I doing the same thing to both sides? Some say yes, some say no. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And how do you know you're doing the same thing to both sides? Because 3x plus 12y is 3x plus 12 by 129. Like, I'm not adding 129 to both sides. I'm not adding 3x plus 12y to both sides. No, but you will multiply the original equation by 3, and you multiply both sides by 3. Okay. What does that mean? Then you have an equivalent equation, and you've done the same thing to both sides. Okay, so this, is, this equation is, is equivalent to this equation. So think about it. Like, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking negative 3x minus 3y. And I'm adding to that 3x plus 12y. And you'd expect that on the other side, if I'm going to do the same thing to both sides, what would I do to this side? 3x. Add 3x plus 12y. But I'm not. I'm adding 129. Because 129 equals 3x plus 12y? Exactly. So it's like 9 the same thing? It is 
the same thing in this case, right? For the specific set of solutions or set of uh, equations, that is the same as that. We are doing the same thing to both sides because these two things are equivalent, as stated in this equation. You know, he's put out to soft. So each other so they are equivalent so we are doing equivalent things to both sides right it may look different but like uh, I can multiply this side by um, let's see I can divide this side by three and I can multiply this side by one third right that's the same thing correct mm -hmm. yeah so they're equivalent things they just don't look quite the same but we know they're the same because it says they're the same anyway here we go negative three x plus three x is no x's 12 y minus three y is nine y 129 minus 39, 90 it seems, right? Mm -hmm. So we divide by 9, y is 10. How do we figure out what x is? Yes. You plug it into one of the equations. One, uh, which one? Uh, one except for you have to plug it into the original x. I couldn't put it in here? No. I couldn't tie it. Well, you could, could. but <laughs> okay. weird. I wouldn't. It would be weird. It would be kind of redundant because at some point I'd have to like divide by three. Well, I had to divide three because I multiplied by three in the first place. So why would I do all that? So uh, one of the originals probably a good idea, but it doesn't matter, right? That's the that's the important part. It doesn't matter because this x and y that we're going to find it's going to work here and here, here and here, here and here, in any of either of these equations or any multiple of either of these equations or any combination of these two equations. Okay. So. Here we go, we put the 10 back in, let's say here, because it's just a regular old x. So x plus four times 10 equals 43, so x equals three, right? 40, we subtract 40 from both sides, and we get x is three. So what's the solution to this equation? The solution of the system of equations. How many x's? Three and 10. Three and 10. Three for x, 10 for y. Three for x, I can't write. 3 for x, 10 for y. So here's a new system. I want you to guess. Why did I now move on to this system of equations? Why did I include it? I multiply both of them by something, and I wanted to show you, you know, sometimes that's necessary. So I have to multiply both of them by something. Whereas in the last example, we just had to multiply one equation by three, now we have to multiply both equations by something. Not the same thing, but something. And it's up to us. There's at least a couple of obvious choices, I think. So what would you do? What are we going to multiply by? Multiply the top by five and the bottom by negative two. Okay. Get. We get negative 10 x. What's that? Yeah. Yeah? Because I, I crossed up a negative. But it's there. Uh, plus 15 y equals. What? Thank you. Uh, negative 2 times negative 5 x. Make it so I don't cross out the negative here. It's positive 10 x. That's why Kelly chose to do that, right? Because we get the opposite x's here. Plus uh, eight, eight. Okay. plus eight y equals a positive ninety-four. So ten uh, x minus ten x is zero. Fifteen y plus eight y is twenty-three y equals 184, hopefully 184 is divisible by 23, and 8. And now we know y is 8, so we figure out x by plugging this back into one of the equations. Uh, how about the first one? 2x plus 3 times 8 equals 
equals 18 x plus 24 18 2x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 3. Isn't the 2 a negative here? Yeah, Five and negative two. Are those only two? No, we can do uh, negative five, positive two. That has the same effect. Anybody else think anything else? Any other? Idea? Multiply by twenty. Oh no, multiply. Multiply. Four. Four. Oh, four and ten. Multiply this by four and that by ten. So you get the most twenty. Four. Four. One of them. Yeah. Four and three. Four and three. That's that would be my inclination because I don't know. Just I mean, it's practice or whatever. I see a positive and I see a negative, and that's what I like to just start with because they're already opposite, and so I just need to make them the same size. So I multiply this by four and this by three. That's another way to go. Eliminate the y's and solve for x. Lots of different choices. All right. So now I have to write a system. We'll start with a fairly simple system here. The sum of two numbers is 37. What are, what are we going to call these two numbers? X and y. What's the sum? 37 addition. Ah, yeah. The answer to an addition. The answer to an addition problem, yeah. So, so x plus y is 37. What's the difference mean? Subtraction. So we do you have to do x minus y? Can we do y minus x? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't make any difference. But certainly I would want to go in the same order because that's just convenient. We approach this uh, system of equations. Yep. Okay, so what is it we're actually doing? That, that adding. adding them. So we're adding them, and then the y's will cancel out. It's just like set up. It's just waiting for us to add them together and eliminate that x, or sorry, that y. So 2x equals 52. x equals 26. So let's just take uh, this 26 right there. 26 plus y equals 37. y equals 37 minus 26. Is it about 11? Yep. All right. So the solution is 26 for x and 11 for y. However it is that they're asking us that, oh, they're not asking us for x and y, they're asking us for the large number and the small number, right? So the large number is 26, smaller number is 11. Sum of two angles is 86 degrees. And the second part can be kind of tricky to figure out what it's trying to say, or what equation to write to that. So that's why we're bringing this up. How can we say that the sum of two angles is 86? Right. Y equals 86. X plus Y equals 86. And since the, you can see how they're asking for angle one and angle two, we should probably decide which is which. X is one and Y is two, it doesn't matter. Just as long as we know which is which. It is certainly you know, true that X plus Y equals 86. Angle two, what are we calling angle two? calling it y. So let's, read, let's start to reread the sentence. Y is, it's making a statement about y, saying that y is something. Y is equal to. Yes. If I'm saying in English, y is something. In math, I'm saying y is equal to something. I'm saying it's the same as something else. So equals 58 smaller than something else. So how do I express? OK, so 58 smaller than means subtract 58 from something. From what? From 2 times angle 1. Okay. Subtract 58 from 2 times x. OK, what do you mean by that, Brennan? That's 58, 58. What did I? Oh, that's important. OK, so what do you mean? You said substitution. What do you mean by that? Then for in the verbal equation, yeah. for y, you add in the green equation. Well, 
I can't put an equation in there. Well, it would be x plus 2x minus 50 of what y equals. Right? Yeah, what y is, y is the same as 2x minus 58. So wherever y is, 2x minus 58 plays the same role. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's the equivalent thing. It's like taking out a dollar and replacing it with four quarters. They're equivalent. They're the same thing. Okay. So y is that. So that now becomes x plus 2x minus 58. What we used to call y is now 2x minus 58. So 86. It's all correct. 3x at 56 to both sides. So you get 1. What were you? 58. 58. What did I say? You said add 56. Okay, I don't know why you call it at 56. 144. Yeah. Okay. X equals 48. Now y. Look at that. That equation tells us exactly like y is already solved for. Let's plug it in there. That's much easier. Anything else you can well, do? Couldn't you just say the sum is 86, so take 86 minus 48? Sure, you could put it into that equation. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Either equation works. Um, so 2 times 48 is 136. No. 96. 96. 96. I was doing much better last class. I don't know what's wrong with you today. 38. 38? 38. So what's it asking for? Angle 1. Which one of these is angle 1? X. X, because that's what we said over here, or remembered in our heads. So that's 48, and angle 2 is 38. How did this person come up with this? I don't know. This is actually someone's answer from someone, somewhere in this class. If I can be most of this. Where's the beginning of it? Okay. Here's a system of equations that was a, seemed to be a tricky one because it has dollar amounts and then it's not dollar amounts. And people were trying to force dollar amounts where they didn't even belong and not including dollar amounts where they should be. Okay. It really requires that you think about the situation and if you need to, just make up some numbers to, to plug in there uh, to help you write your equation. Right. So you're trying to find the number of teachers and students. Well, if from what? Oh, right, oh right. So if tickets cost $5 for teachers and four fifty dollars for students, let's just think about that for a second. Let's make up some numbers, like three teachers went and uh, eight students went. How would we find the total cost? Five times three plus four fifty times eight. Everybody agree on that? Mm -hmm. right, so we got three tickets at $5 a piece, so that's $15, right? That's a multiplication. Yeah. And then eight tickets at four fifty dollars each that's 36. 36. Uh, so we add that together, and that's the total amount. Right? Easy but when it comes to writing an equation of x and y, that's where people seem to get all mixed up. But it's the exact same thing as what we just did. It's just that instead of knowing how many teachers there are, I don't know how many teachers there are, but I would do the same thing. x, right? Where I used to have three teachers, and I multiplied 3 times 5 to get 15. Now I say 5 times x get whatever it cost all the teachers to go to this uh, what museum. 5 times x, that's the amount that it costs to pay for all the teachers to go. We'll call this y. We'll still do 450 times y and add it together. And when we add it all together, we get 51. Uh, the next one, so they're just telling us about a, another thing they went to do. They went to another museum, a history museum, not an art museum. Exact same kind of a situation. So $20 each for the teachers, X is for teachers, plus $9.50. Y. And that comes out to be $100. This is a well-cultured school. Is Loyola. <laughs> yeah, they can afford it. <laughs> All right, so how would you like to solve this system? Prime negative 4 on the top. I like that idea because that's going to give us a negative 20x. Right. Yeah. So 
say again? To multiply by? Do you want to pick a number or two numbers, like you might have to multiply both equations, so that either the x's or the y's come out to be opposite of each other, so that when you add the two equations, they eliminate each other. Because we're, we're, we're not done writing this out yet, but when we do, we're going to add them together, and 20x minus 20x is going to be 0. There's going to be no more x's. So we'll just have y's to solve for x. And 4 times 4.5, that's going to be, so it's going to be negative. 18, y, 8, negative 8. Yeah. And uh, 51 <laughs> times negative 4, negative 204. So we add them together. Add them together. We get uh, negative what? No, you don't get negative 8.5. Negative 8.5y. Negative Divide by negative 8.5. Eight. Eight. What does that mean, y equals 8? There is eight, 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 eight students going, eight kids going. So we plug that back in to say there, whatever. That one, that one, that one if we want. Actually, see what the like with the other ones. We can't see the equations they wrote and stuff because probably on paper or the scratch pad and the scratch pad didn't get saved. But we can see what this person actually graphed. All right, and let's see if we can find their mistake. Okay. Yeah, you can't do scratch pads on the graphing ones. No. That. It's already like a slope intercept form. It's a nice way to have yeah. your inequalities written. So is that graph correctly? Yeah. First, like the y-intercept. So the right y-intercept is the blue five. one. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Slope of. Down two over one. So down two to the right one. That's a negative slope. So that's right. Y is greater than. Uh, greater than <coughs> stated above. That dash line. Right, because it's not equal to. Blue looks good. Here, let me uh, over here. I can use a pen. This one, we'll just go ahead and get it in um, slope to intercept form. Negative 6y is less than negative 3x plus 30. Divide by negative 6 on both sides. What happens when you divide by negative 6? Flip it around. So we have y is greater than positive 1 half x minus 5. So we've got a y intercept to negative 5. OK. Yes. Uh, up, one. up one over two. So they had, uh, I'm seeing some negative divided by negative is negative sometimes on your work. That's not true. Negative divided by negative is positive. So positive one half. So it should have come up one and over two. Okay, let's anticipate that change. Should it be shaded above? Yes. It should, right? Y is greater than. Y is vertical, so greater than the vertical direction is up, shade above. So we should, when we click over to the right answer, we should just see that slope change. Uh, I got an arrow. There we go. That's what it was. And that, that was when they got that answer correct. Okay. Right, let's check and see if the, the graphs are correct. Uh, negative 1. 
what? Uh, slope of t up to two over one. one. That's correct. Shaded low dotted line. Yes. Okay. So this guy here, two y less than or equal to positive twelve x minus ten. Divide by two. Y is still less than or equal to six x minus five. So we got a slope or a uh, y intercept of negative five. Slope of one, two, three, four, five, six, and a one there. It's a solid line. It's shaded below. Okay. Well, then they must have graphed it correctly and got it wrong because of this part. Any of those questions. Negative six, negative eight, a solution, and our six, in the six three, a solution. Let's see. Well, this actually they used this clue actually for this hint. Used this hint. So I plotted the points for you. And we see six three is right there. Is that a solution? Yes. Yeah. What does it mean to be a solution to a system of any inequalities? Yeah. It can be plugged into both of the equations. True, and how do we see that on the graph? It's in both of their shading. Both of the shading, the overlap of the shading exists there. This is like a super non-solution, right? Why would I say it that way? It's not even one of them. It's not even one of them. Let me ask you this. Is uh, this a solution? No. No. no it's this a solution? No. It's in the green and shaded area, isn't it? It's on a dashed line. Anything on a dashed line is not a solution, right? Let's, let's think about this. So this is for the blue one, right? So we take a point from the line, an x and a y. We take that x and y and we plug it into this blue guy here. What happens when we put that x and that y from the line into that inequality? What do we see? They're equal to each other. Both sides are equal. Because these are the points from the equation y equals 2x minus 1. Right? So all the points on the line are the points that make both sides exactly equal to each other. But we don't want that, right? Because we have less than, no equal to. And that's why we put that dotted line. It's just like a border. It's just like shaded area stopped here. This line not included. These are not solutions to that inequality. So while it is still in the green area, and it's like right next to the blue area, not in the blue area, and the blue line doesn't count, it's a dashed line, we don't want both sides to be equal, so no, it's not a solution. What about this guy right here? It is because it is in the blue line, and it is, or the blue shaded area, and it's on a solid line, which the, the solid line includes those points. Line, but it's also on the dash line, dash line and, and points on the dash line, not solutions. Okay. And definitely, I saw some of these like two dashed lines, oh, or two dashed lines, you're just on two dashed lines now. That's even extra not solution, right? It's not even a solution to either of them, actually. Um, any other questions about any other kinds of things that you've been seeing?